Hello everyone, this is Ben Lee. I was uh, recently watching a video from Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium, my friend Alex. And uh, he was out basically while catching some fish in the Seattle area. And one of the, the ponds he comes across has dojo loaches in it. Now, you guys know, you can even see one of Team Thick behind me. My house likes dojo loaches. We've kind of fallen in love with them. They're quirky and interesting, and they've got a lot of character to them, a lot like some of our cichlids. But the thing is, they can be a very invasive species because they can handle a wide range of weather temperatures, and they can even survive outside of the water for a surprising amount of time moving along the ground to get to other bodies of water. So even if you have a small pond and they're isolated to that pond, if there are other water structures or some kind of flooding happens because there's maybe you're in a flood region and there's other ponds that could because of floodwaters be closer or rivers or streams, they could move and become invasive in other bodies of water. Now, invasive species is not localized to just something like a dojo loach. And I know I'll be preaching to the choir with most of you, but I kind of felt it was necessary to make this, and let me explain why. I told my significant other about this story, because she loves those noodles, and eventually we'll have a big kind of touch pond, if you will, with a whole lot more of them for all of us to enjoy. And while it was interesting, the first thought that she had was, it's horrible that someone would be irresponsible enough to release them into the wild without even thinking about what it could do to that local habitat. That's a non-aquarist saying that. When I was a kid, I used to go fishing with my dad in the Sammamish Slough, which is a part of Lake Sammamish, which is home to a very important salmon spawning ground. But the whole slough was home to lots of rainbow trout, mostly. Some brown trout, too, but mostly rainbow trout. Well, some genius released carp into the slough. And... After a couple of years, you, you really couldn't get any fish. It was just carp. And then the state had to stop fishing on the slough because the native species were being so damaged. And in spawning season for the salmon, the new salmon were getting killed in such numbers that it was now no longer safe for fishermen to even try to catch some of the adults coming upstream toward the lake. Now, we hobbyists, we often get to, with pride, say that we're part of why certain species of fish haven't gone truly extinct. They may be extinct in the wild, like some of the gadaids, rainbow fish, even some of our African lake cichlids, and there's lots of species. I know, I'm leaving tons out, but it's because of us that many of them still survive today. But unfortunately, it's because of some hobbyists when they start and maybe a fish gets way bigger. The information's not out there. They don't realize a dojo loach can get a foot long or that a that little goldfish that little Timmy wanted a fair is going to end up being this big, like a comic goldfish that used to be in a private pond where my uncle would take me and my cousins to fish when we were young. I can remember this <laughs> mobile home uh, neighborhood, basically, that had a small pond on it, and he had a friend there, it was a private pond, but the fishing was good. Crappie, bass, some perch, but mostly crappie and bass. Go off the dock, and right to the left-hand side of the dock, there's this huge comet goldfish. And I'm, I'm not kidding when I say it was probably about this big. Maybe bigger. And it would just sit at the dock, because it knew that all the people that would come would feed it. Thankfully, there was only one in there. But imagine if there were more. That little pond, which was fed by a creek and it was a good little water system, could have had its entire native species habitat destroyed by a common goldfish. 
because it's not always about specifically a species eating some other species. Sometimes it's what they do to the terrain of that water system that prevents other species from being able to survive, from their young surviving, from having viable next generations of part of the wildlife that makes this world so wonderful. I know, you're probably like, Bentley, we know. Why are you telling us this? Because if even one person who's a new hobbyist watches this video, and when a fish maybe gets out of control, the rainbow shark or ball of shark, if you get a red-tailed catfish, whatever it may be that seems super cute at a Petco or a PetSmart or even a local fish store that maybe just doesn't think to make sure that person knows just how big those fish are going to get, that hobbyist will instead find a different aquarist or another local fish store that is willing to take that fish in instead of thinking, well, I don't want the fish to die. Why don't I just put it out in this local lake or pond or stream, whatever it may be, where it can live a good life. But how many lives could it potentially ruin a decade from now? I know some of these topics are heavy, but not long ago, and we're still in this process, we were talking about amendments to the Lacey Act. And there's been all sorts of other things that have kept the U.S. government busy, but that's still on the horizon. And it is because of some of these incidents like lionfish that are down in the, the Florida saltwater areas that have been ruining big portions of some of the local reefs and habitat and local fish populations or... Uh, the, the plecos that have been released into the natural habitat of the manatee, things like when a dojo loach gets released into a pond, as much as we might love those silly space noodles, <laughs> those little Cthulhu tentacle face monsters, right? As much as we may love them, one mistake of releasing a couple fish thinking, oh, it can't hurt, a decade later could lead to a serious disaster. So the better and more often we remind not only ourselves, but other potential hobbyists of this important lesson, maybe that'll save one other water system. Maybe one species of fish won't have to be rescued by us humans in order to survive. I'm going to put kind of a public challenge out there. I would love for any other fish creator to find a local water habitat. Local doesn't have to be super close. It could be within a few hours that has had some kind of impact where either the government and man has had to step in to help it, or maybe it has been ruined because of an invasive species of plant or an invasive fish. Maybe some turtles got introduced somewhere where they normally did not survive. Whatever it may be, I want to hear your stories because the more we talk about this, the more likely we are to prevent it from happening in the future. To all of you watching who have sat here this long and said, I'm with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.